This is The Baloney Tales, Season 1, The Baloney in the Mist, Episode 5, The Trickster. Gaithenads, Peter, and Ricket Randy emerge from the stinky block of cheese along with the rat people. The men rush to the river nearby to clean themselves. A rat face follows them. I, I led you through, through forest? I lead you. Gaithenads tries not to be rude. Ratface, I, I appreciate the gesture, but we are traveling far away from your home. You've done more than enough for us, allowing us to stay here. I come with you. I bring cheese. I bring fleas. I make rat milk for you to drink. Peter winces. <laughs> Yo, that's straight cringe, bro. Ratface says, the, 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 the tippy forest is, is dangerous. I, I lead the way, uh-huh. Gaithenads looks at the ground defeated. Okay, Ratface, you can lead us through the tippy forest. Ratface exclaims, Yay! <laughs> Ratface does a little dance and shakes hundreds of fleas off of his flea-infested coat. The fleas jump all over the men in hunger. Ricket Randy screams, ah! While Gaithenad starts sucking on his sword. By the magic of sword sucking alone, the fleas leave the men. Peter says, I want to suck a sword. I want to learn this ancient magic. Gaithenads chuckles. My sweet summer child, I've sucked swords my whole life. What makes you think that you can suck one now? Peter kicks a rock in the dirt. I'm going to mute you. Gaithenads replies sternly. I'll suck my sword so hard I'll server mute you, dickwad. Peter regains his composure. I'm, I'm sorry, gay fanads. I got carried away. Ratface interrupts. <laughs> Let's go. We have far to go. <laughs> Do we need to leave the tippy forest. The men begin to follow Ratface. As they go across the river, uh, for the next few hours, they go through windy trails and the forest becomes less and less dense with plant life. The men are getting hungry, as the trails never seem to end. Ricky Randy says, My bug but hungry. Ratface says, oh, I got cheese. Gaithenad says to Ratface, We need something more than cheese, no offense. Is there any source of food nearby? Ratface says, Ah, uh, um, we, we are close to a pumpkin patch. Would you like a pumpkin with cheese? Rick and Randy's face lights up. I love pumpkins! Ratface leads the way to the pumpkin patch. As the men get close, they notice that the pumpkins are placed perfectly. There are eight pumpkins in a row, and eight per row. Towards the middle of the pumpkin patch, there was one pumpkin that does not look like the others. It appears that this pumpkin has a top hat. The men move closer to investigate. The soil near the pumpkin shakes, and a pumpkin pops up. The pumpin pumpkin then begins to climb out of the ground with a vine torso, vine legs, and vine arms. He stands, he stands up straight and fixes his top hat and gives the men a gentle smile. H Hello, travelers. I'm Mr. Pumpkin, and this is my pumpkin patch. W were you trying to eat my friends? Gaithenads looks around worried. We didn't mean to eat any pumpkins. Mr. Pumpkin, do, do you know of any food close by? Mr. Pumpkin replies, Oh, I'm just messing with you little boys. Please enjoy a pumpkin. 
Rick at Randy and Peter ravage about and break open a pumpkin. These pumpkins are filled with Tootsie Rolls and sour candy. The men devour the candy quickly. Mr. Pumpkin begins to speak. All of my pumpkins are full of the best candy in the tippy forest. Mr. Pumpkin grabs a pumpkin by its stem and says, Oh, oh my, I must venture to the swamp lands. If you mortals will follow me, I will bring my most special pumpkin full of candy, and I will lead you out of the tippy forest and closer to the kingdom of J-Cloud. Gaffinads blinks quickly and hesitates. How, how did you know that we were going to the kingdom of J-Cloud? I'm part of the Pumpkin Clan. We inhabit the Tippy Forest along with the Rat People. For here we live co-harmoniously. The rats don't touch our pumpkins, and we don't touch their cheese. Ratface claps his hands vigorously. <laughs> I friend with the pumpkin clan. Mr. Pumpkin smiles at Ratface. Yes, you are my special little flower. Mr. Pumpkin walks over to Ratface and gives him a little pumpkin kiss on his rat teeth. Ratface sneezes on Mr. Pumpkin, and pieces of cheese go all over Mr. Pumpkin's face. Mr. Pumpkin smiles and says, God's dead. Gaffinad says, the more the merrier. Mr. Pumpkin and Ratface are welcome on our journey. Peter says, Jesus Christ, we have enough men on this journey. Gaffinad says, Peter, can we speak in private for a moment? Gaffinad leads Peter away from the pumpkin patch to speak with him. Peter, we need to work with the resources we have, or we'll never make it to the kingdom of J-Cloud. If you want to get your ability to clear Final Fantasy XIV raids back, we need to do everything that's necessary. Peter replies, I just don't know if I could be on this journey much longer. I have no gill left. I have no GP on RuneScape. I don't even have money on Diablo 3 for God's sakes. Gaffinads tries to reassure Peter. Peter, please, don't give up now. We are far into the tippy forest and you won't be able to leave on your own. Come come to the kingdom of J-Cloud with us. We can make it an adventure, just like the good old days, remember? Peter reflects on when they were kids and how they would play outside, back in the simpler times. Peter gathers his composure once again. Okay, okay, Gaffin adds, let's go. The men begin to walk to the pumpkin patch and notice that Mr. Pumpkin is feeding Ricket Randy. Ricket Randy pulls up his shirt and rubs his tummy in front of Mr. Pumpkin. Mr. Pumpkin says, Oh, oh my, that's a big boy tummy. Here's more pumpkin, my buttercup angel face. Ricket Randy continues to eat the pumpkin. Gaffinads walks up to Ricket Randy. Ricket Randy, you ate enough. Stop eating. Gaffinads hears something behind him. He turns around to get a good look. Mr. Pumpkin is standing behind him. In an instant, his mind goes black. Peter drops to the ground and hides his eyes once he saw that Gaffinads collapses on the ground. Gaffinads' eyes open in a daze. At that moment, he was not oriented times three. After taking a few moments to come back to consciousness, he realized that he's holding a sharp knife coated in red. He peers over and sees that Rick and Randy is laying on the ground lifeless with his throat slit. Mr. Pumpkin and Ratface are sitting on the ground around him. 
Peter was still shaking on the ground, scared. Gaffin adds gets up and runs over to Rick and Randy. My, my guru! What, what happened? Mr. Pumpkin says, Your, your friend is now a casualty of the Baloney King. The king's jester appeared before you. He took control of your mind. After you collapsed to the ground, he manipulated you to get up and cut your friend's throat. I'm, I'm so sorry. Gaffinad screams in horror. Ah. Gaffinad begins to weep at the sight of his dead guru. Peter comes over and gives Gaffinad a smooch on the cheek. Gaffinad wipes the tear from his eye. Let's go. We must stop the Baloney King before he kills all of us. In the meantime, the Baloney King sits in his throne room with Professor Kelly and his council. The Baloney King, still high from his visit to the Enchanted Barrow, mutters, I'm so excited for our kingdom's party next week. My gorilla pigs treated me so well. I want them to attend my kingdom's party. Professor Kelly looks around at the other counselors. Um, did nobody tell him? The Baloney King says, Tell me what? Professor Kelly replies, we changed the dates. Are, are we not going to tell him? The Baloney King snaps. Are you guys just going to leave me in the dark? Professor Kelly says, Okay, Baloney King, we always have the kingdom party on the third moon. But this time, we changed the dates to have it on the fourth moon. The Baloney King whines. But, but I have a wedding on the fourth moon I have to go to. We're, we are having it on the third moon. Professor Kelly looks down. W whatever you want, Baloney King. The Baloney King stands up and yells, You're no longer part of this group. Get out! Forever! Professor Kelly walks out of the Baloney King's throne room. The Baloney King says, She is banished! Escort her from my kingdom immediately! The counselors quickly leave the room. As the counselors leave, Jester Jackass, wearing his pumpkin suit, enters the room, skipping his way to the Baloney King's throne. Oh, Baloney King, you're going to be so proud of me. <laughs> Looky what I have. Jester Jackass holds up a Digimon card with a glowing light inside of it. The essence located in the Digimon card could only be that of a mortal soul. The Baloney King smiles widely. Perfect. Jester Jackass exclaims, <laughs> Now we can use the mortal soul for the giant abomination! 